you ready to master the waves of medical device product development? Well, wax up your surfboard because you are listening to Inspired by Amua. And here is your medical device product development expert, that Hawaiian hearted hostess who will help you hang 10, Megan Alonso. Hey, come on, my and aloha. You're listening to Inspired by Amua, where we help you master the waves of medical product development. Each week, we interview guests that educate, guide, and inspire to give you the skills that you and your product need to hang 10. If this is your first time listening, Amua is spelled I-M-U-A. It's a Hawaiian word meaning to advance forward with passion despite rough waves. There are plenty of those in medical product development, but keep listening because we've got you covered. So I have a special guest with me today. He's been through quite the journey. If you remember a few episodes back, I interviewed a woman named Jan Piquet, and my guest today has the same thing that Jan has, except he's very unique in that he's only 26 years old and he's a bodybuilder, and he works out with a backpack on his back. And so when people ask, well, why why do you have that? He says, well, actually... This is my artificial heart in here. So he's going to tell you all about it and tell you why you need to, to keep moving forward with medical engineering to design new heart products. So please help me welcome Andrew Jones or AJ to our show. So AJ, are you ready to hang 10? I am. I definitely am. It'll be a first, but I think I can handle it. <laughs> <laughs> I think you'll do just fine in our, in our little ocean here. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I kind of gave a little bit of your back, background, but take a few minutes and really give us the story of how how you ended up with an LVAD. Uh, well, it, it dates all the way back to 2012 when I first started having my symptoms of heart failure. I w- it felt as if I was breathing through a sponge. That would be the best way to explain it. That's been the only way I've been explaining it. And uh, it was just difficulty breathing. Um, for about two years, and my body was able to compensate for that quite well. But, of course, there was a tipping point where I fell ill quite suddenly, very ill. I was having pneumonia-like symptoms and coughing, feeling lightheaded, and just tired all the time. And I felt weak, and it got to the point where I wasn't able to work out or go to work. found myself in my bedroom all the time. And uh, it was you know, it was kind of the opposite of what my life was before. I was very active before, and going from you know doing stuff with my friends and going to the gym and basically doing all the things that I wanted to do, I found myself doing that the exact opposite, and you know in a way it was quite depressing. And uh, you know. 2015 is when all of that kind of, you know, everything started, came crashing down and I found myself in the hospital awaiting a heart transplant and I was there for about uh, a little bit over four months and uh, I was discharged. You were in the hospital for four months? Yes. Wow. Yeah, before then I was in and out of the hospital, you know, maybe for a few days or a couple weeks at a time. But uh, my last day uh, was for the long haul, and that was uh, the original plan was to wait in the hospital for the heart transplant. But uh, you know the universe had different plans, and I was fitted with the left ventricular cyst device because uh, my condition was beginning to further deteriorate, despite being on all the uh, the the medications and uh, medicines that were allowing my pump to. My, my heart to pump strong. Uh-huh. And uh, so that was the next, that had to be the next step to be uh, for me to take because that would allow me to, they consider this device to be a bridge to transplant. So this is what's going to carry me over, allow me to continue waiting uh, until I get my call for my transplant. Mm-hmm. And so you're on the list already. And yes, I've been on set. the list for okay. well over a year. Yeah. And um, coming up on a year with the device as well, and uh, I was able to be discharged from the from the hospital. So there's that was the you know the very good news with getting the uh, artificial heart. 
and that's uh, essentially, you know, where I've ended up today. It's allowed yeah. me to um, regain a, an immense amount of normalcy back to my life. I'm able to see my friends. I'm able to do the things that I love and more, especially nowadays. And it's you know, it's almost challenging to remember that I'm actually still a heart tra- uh, heart patient because I yeah. feel very normal and I feel very strong. So I can't forget that uh, my health and my heart condition are all remain top priority no matter what. Mm-hmm. So LVADs, you, you usually see older patients with them. What What's unique about your condition that you know, a very healthy 26-year-old, you know, someone that works out all the time is in bodybuilding, uh, takes good care of himself. How, how did you end up with heart failure? It started off as a, uh, a virus that had uh, attacked my heart. And although the virus was, you know, had uh, left, I, my body fought it off, it left uh, damage that um, caused my heart to go into heart failure, to succumb to the cardiomyopathy. And unfortunately, mm-hmm. it, this happened uh, way before we could catch it. So there wasn't, there were no signs of what virus it was. And, you know, I've been through many tests, uh, to check, to test for cancers and various other common diseases, which they all came back negative, but it's beyond yeah. the now where we worry about what virus it was. I mean, hopefully we can still, uh, figure out, um, you know, try to get some sort of clues as to what really caused it and to hopefully prevent this from happening to anyone else. But again, the main priority is just getting the heart transplant and moving forward from there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So besides getting your heart transplant, I know you're you're working on something large. <laughs> so yeah. tell tell us about that. <laughs> uh, so um, a couple of things that I'm working on that I would consider pretty large. One of them is Hearts at Large, which is my uh, nonprofit charity to an effort to raise awareness for organ donation to promote the, the, uh, the miraculous, um, process of what it means to become an organ donor and what that does for so many people. A lot of people don't understand that when you register as an organ donor, you can essentially save up to eight lives. And, um, uh, when you include organ, eye and tissue donation, you're looking at, saving eight lives and potentially enhancing more than 40, 50 lives. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, the, one of my favorite things to do is to spit these facts at people and see their face kind of light up and say, wow, is that really true? And yeah, yeah, you can fact check it. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's the uh, main initiative with Hearts at Large. There simply just aren't enough organ, or, um, enough people registered as organ donors uh, with the 120,000 plus people waiting an organ donation that doesn't even include the potentially millions of people who don't have access to uh, stable health care, who can't make it into a hospital to even be diagnosed. So people yeah. are passing, millions of people are passing away from organ failure alone, not just from waiting for an organ or for an organ transplant. Mm-hmm. So I know people can register to be organ donors when when they get their license or they re- renew their license. Mm-hmm. But what are what are some other ways that they can do it? Uh, people can register as organ donors online. Now, that will vary from state to state. For example, here in Connecticut, you can register as an organ donor right online, and uh, you don't have to fill out any sort of change of address form. But uh, I believe uh, New York would be um, one state that does require physical paperwork uh, to be uh-huh. completed. And, you know, with everything going digital these days, I just don't understand why we haven't. Well, I shouldn't say that. It's just now becoming a, uh, a trending topic, especially with Apple beginning to include uh, the, the ability to, for people to register as organ donors through their smartphones. So they've created a centralized system for people to do this seamlessly. And that's going to, I see it, you know, changing so many things in the organ donation space. 
So, by the way, if no one knows what we're talking about with that, if you mm-hmm. have an iPhone, I just I just got mine out to look. So, I think maybe it's iPhone five and newer, or maybe six. Well, and newer, what it is, it's going to be um, a part of the new uh, iOS software that doesn't come out oh. until the fall, okay. I believe. So that's what we can look forward to coming from Apple. Very okay. exciting. So right now, I, if actually right now it's on my phone. So just so okay. you know, if you pull up your phone and you have it locked. So right, right now I'm pulling mine out and it says slide to unlock. And then you have to enter a passcode. There's this emergency button here on the lower left-hand side. So that, you know, if a firefighter yes. finds you and what who is this person you know then so they click that and then there's something that says medical id and i have i have mine filled out that lists your medical conditions your allergies instructions yes. like i'm i have my dog abby <laughs> that i'm concerned mm. about so i say uh if if abby is in the car with car with me please take her to the nearest pet hospital if she was if she's injured and i will pay the bill and then it lists your emergency contacts and down all the way at the bottom it does say organ donor and so i have mine marked yes so in case you guys haven't done that and you want to do that that's a way to do that yeah definitely i mine is filled out as well uh it's and it's really uh it's really important and i don't see why you wouldn't want to do something like that a little bit of time to uh further protect yourself you might as well take the two minutes that it takes to fill out that information. Uh, you know, I'm a, an example of, of what it means to, you know, nobody's invincible. Tomorrow's not guaranteed for anyone. I consider myself blessed because I took it upon myself to start weight training and exercising when I first went to college, um, well, taking it seriously and making it part of my lifestyle. I, you know, I'm not sure where I would be if I decided not to do that and just kind of go with the flow, not exercise and eat whatever I want uh, and still yeah. get this disease. Who knows where I would be? Mm-hmm. So, you know, it, it's really important that we try to encourage people to take strides immediately regarding your health, uh, whether it be exercising or filling out your medical ID on your phone, whatever it is that can improve your health and protect you, you should be taking uh, the initiative to uh, to fulfill that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So back to the LVAD. Uh, mm-hmm. What if you were to see? Oh, what do you know? What brand yours is, by the way? Um, my LVAD is made by Hardware. Okay. Uh, they were recently that's a popular um, one. acquired. Yeah, they're recently acquired by Medtronic. So that's mm-hmm. another name that. Um, is if that anybody's familiar with that. And I also have a defibrillator in my upper left chest, and that one is uh, manufactured and engineered by Boston Scientific. Okay. So if you were to meet some of those engineers that worked on this product or anyone really involved in the innovation of the product, what mm-hmm. what would you want to tell them uh, if you if you wanted to thank them, but also kind of your feedback on, hey, next generation, you should do this. Or- <laughs> it's it's really funny you say that because um, you know maybe two two and a half months ago, I actually got in touch with the vice president of Hardware, and uh, I left him a message, and he put me in touch with somebody from their marketing department, and of course, I was very excited to share uh, with them, you know, what what they've essentially created with. One of yeah. their devices is doing for someone. I know that they they're aware of the people that they're helping, but I realized how my transformation. Uh, I realized what kind of impact that I was having, and I had to let them know that this was you know everything was going you know everything that was going on, and of course I had my thoughts and my ideas of what could you know be in store for the future of their devices and. Um, just to list a few, um, obviously one of the big ones that a lot of people talk about within LVAD support groups is, you know, carrying the device itself. You know, mm-hmm. obviously we want, we always want our devices to be slimmer. We want them to be, get smaller. And that's what's been happening, especially with smartphones. Everything's getting thinner and smaller and smaller. And, you know, they're doing this and that to it. And that's great and all, but 
there's not a lot of talk about it with the medical devices. Granted that there are yeah. a lot of people with my device. There are maybe 10,000 people with my specific device, but that doesn't mean that we can't have a voice in how mm-hmm. these devices are, be cre- are being created. So one of the main thing, one of the hottest topics for the LVAD community is how to carry this device. Uh, you know, they provide you with a satchel or a waistband or like a fanny pack type of uh, accessory to carry your your computer controller and batteries. And yeah. I took it amongst myself to do some digging, and um, I'm currently carrying mine in a waterproof Patagonia satchel pack. And I tried uh-huh. to show it to you, but we're on a audio podcast, so that's kind I of. Think- yeah, I'll you have can some see pictures it on my on the Instagram. Show yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but I found this one because it's um, it works well for someone who's active. It sits close to my body. Uh, the drive line is secure. And, of course, it's waterproof, so it's safe from the elements. I feel like a little more effort could be done to improve the accessory because not only is it important to have something that's very safe and compact, but... You know, these people are walking around with a medical device that some people may not feel too confident about being in public with. So something that can see that would be seamless, that would not really draw attention because I've been walking around with this device for for a very long time and people don't really know what it is unless they ask or I tell them. And I do get a lot of people that ask, um, you know, they ask, oh, you carry that backpack around and I'm confident enough to share exactly what it is. But... That may not be the case for everyone. So that's something uh-huh. that um, should be considered. And um, regarding the functionality of the device itself, I people with this device are required to have their blood drawn every week to measure their INR, which is a measurement of our blood's viscosity, how thick it is. With the device, mm-hmm. your body uh, wants to reject the, the device that way. It wants to clot blood around it because it's a foreign object. That puts people at risk for stroke. And we are put on uh, warfarin, Coumadin medication to thin our blood. And this medication is very, very powerful. Um, an incorrect dosing could um, put, you, put you at risk for a, bl- uh, a brain bleed or in- any type of internal bleeding. So... I would say that we could take the technology that measures our INR and place it into this device. Um, Of course, we could still have our INR measured uh, at a a lab um, every once in a while, but maybe if we were to have a readout of our INR maybe constantly or every few hours, however the Mm -hmm. process would work, we could get, we could have people, you know, be very aware of hey, you know, my INR is too low or it's too high. I should call somebody and let them know right away. Yeah, so almost can, like they can do it with a, the exact, technology is there yeah. with blood, blood goop. Exactly. Blood or even if it's monitoring. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and even if, the te- even if it takes 12 hours for an update or an, an, a day, that still beats a week of, you know, yeah. making sure that you're on the correct dosing. We could improve um, the response time to a high or low INR. And we can keep people at a therapeutic range for longer, for not mm-hmm. longer, but, um, uh, to, to, you know, just to keep them within that therapeutic range and not have a lower risk of going outside of what they need to stay at. Yeah. Yeah, that's some great feedback. Yeah, I, I really do wish to, you know, actually get the right platform to speak on that. Uh, I think that that's something they could definitely consider, at least, um, but hardware is making, again, they're making amazing strides to advancing their technology. They're uh, in the early stages of creating the next ventricular assist device, which would be fully implantable. That's the goal. So there would wow. be no external accessories. Uh, um, they would be an entirely different ball game. But especially with the, in the medical field, These things take a lot of time because these are people's lives that are essentially in their hands. So even then, with a new device being introduced in the medical field, insurance companies have to approve it. They may not approve these things right away because they see it as a liability, as a risk. There there haven't been enough trials to see that this is a device that is uh, reliable. 
so until then, you know, there are things that we could probably, you know, little tweaks that we could make to uh, to improve the devices that we already have. Yeah, yeah, and and you are on a good platform right now for getting exactly. your I, I'm getting your platform. feedback out there. People are gonna listen. I always tag uh, the appropriate companies, so I tag oh, perfect. Medtronic. And, yeah, I'll make sure that yeah. they see this too. Yeah, but keep keep in touch with your contact there and just be proactive and say, hey, I really want to help you guys shape the next oh, generation. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's, um, that is a very big goal of mine. I would love yeah. to do that. So you've got a lot of things going on. You're, you're continuing on your training. Uh, so tell us more about your training. Uh, well, with any sort of fitness-related journey, you have to start somewhere. There's, there is rarely a day or time for you to get up and say, you know what, it's time to change my life. I'm going to go get in shape and do whatever it is that I want to do. The best time to do it, I would say, is not just start right now, but s- yeah, that is the best time to do it right now. <laughs> yeah. I know. Even when if you're not even feeling comfortable, because it's going to be challenging, and if you I feel as if if you immerse yourself with this challenge, you, you you'll just be you're already going to start off stronger than the next person. Yeah. Uh, it's there really is no excuse for you not to be taking care of your health. Um, that mm-hmm. being said, I well, you know I'm already a fitness nut, have been, never have lost that drive. I was eager to return to the gym, but before I could. I was recommended to uh, to attend cardiac rehab three times a week for a, yeah. a, you know for a couple of months, and I um, eventually finished the rehabilitation process. And while I was there, maybe halfway through is when I started returning to the gym, starting with light weight, getting my body used to moving again. Because in a, in a hospital room for four months, you're, yeah. the most you can walk. You want to take things slow and. Yeah. That goes with someone um, uh, for someone who is just starting on their fitness journey for the first time in their lives. Definitely take it slow. You don't want to do too much to, to put yourself at risk for injury or illness. But take mm-hmm. it. I you know I took it slow. I looked up um, what others were doing, and that's where my motivation really kicked in because I noticed that not a lot of people with my similar condition and my device were doing this. So. I said, you know what, <laughs> uh, that's going to be me. So yeah. I took baby steps. I kept my doctors in the loop with every single thing that I was doing um, down to the exercise. Uh, at first, because they have to go through your chest to get access to your heart, you want to keep the chest area kind of, you know, just that's the danger zone. You don't want to yeah. have anything. You're not doing a lot of pectoral flies. <laughs> yeah, and at least not in the first few months. Um, yeah. But again, you know, the best time to check it is you want to have your, um, you want to have your doctor kind of clear you for that. They want to make sure that everything's healed. They take an X-ray, whatever it is that they need to do. Have your doctor clear that first. Um, so I was cleared for that, and I began. Still, I took it slow and. Everything else was just um, baby steps, and I didn't give up. That was the main thing. You know, I felt felt very weak the first week or two going back to the gym. I felt very weak, but not discouraged because I knew that this was something that I'm very, very passionate about. And I knew before even I I got sick or before even I had symptoms, I told myself that if there is if I had to start over today, I would not have any remorse about that. I wouldn't be upset in any way because. I would just be able to take what I already know, reapply it, and watch how fast I can bounce back. And that's the mm-hmm. exact, that is exactly what I did for, um, with having this device. And I, bou- I would say that I've bounced back, and I'm still in the process of bouncing back. Uh, of course, the goal is to get the heart transplant, and then from there, I'm going, it's, I'm going to take yeah. things to the very next level. But uh, again, you have to take things in stride. You have to be patient. These results will not come overnight, let alone a week or a month. 
but you'll definitely feel a difference. You will feel yourself getting stronger and you have to believe in yourself. You have to know that that strength is real and mm -hmm. that if you and continue to do this, you'll, you will see great progress. Yeah. And I, I've been there with you. I went through a similar experience. Uh, my mom contracted hepatitis C from a blood transfusion mm -hmm. way back in, see, 1974, but we didn't, we didn't know this until fast forward. It was 98 when we wow. found out. And, and we found out that not only my mom, but I had it and my brother had it and went through some treatments for that. And I, I, I too come from a very fitness background. I, I was a, a gymnast all through college and ever since college, I've still been really active and dance and Pilates and CrossFit. And I, I was a personal trainer for a while, but my, the last treatment that I did, uh, in 2000, 2011 to 2012, which finally just knocked it all out. I, I, I mentally made the space for it. And I think that's really important too, to just take, take some time off. I took some time off work and that was my job to get, to stay healthy through this treatment and everything from my mental attitude. I, I moved to Hawaii because I, I used to live there and that was my, that was my space where I'm just in tune with God spiritually and I have a really good church community there. So that mm -hmm. side, I was eating really healthy. I, uh, I went on, on walks like, like you, you know, I couldn't really exercise much, but I did what I could. And, you know, the, I, I was on a low dose of chemo once a week. So my, my hair was starting to fall out. I got anemia. I had to take a weekly injection to keep up my blood hematocrit mm -hmm. and my hemoglobin. <laughs> and it's, it's tough, but you know, you, you have to, Emua, and you have to move That's through right. it. That's right. Yeah, Emua. Yeah. That's right. I'm going <laughs> to start so, saying that now. I love uh, yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> we're so blessed in this country. I want a shirt. Everything <laughs> we have. Yeah, I should make them. <laughs> but ev should. everything that's yes. given to us, and I feel like people just throw it away sometimes, and they, they sit all day, they become fat and unhealthy, and then, you, you know, the, I think that's the point where they just need to look at you and be like, look, look at AJ. <laughs> if he can do it and he has this LVAD strapped to himself, why can't you get off your butt for half an hour a day? <laughs> I know that's the, exactly what I want people. That's what I want to instill in somebody. If they if they come across one of my videos and or one of my Instagram pictures, I want them to start to I want them to like let's say you're late at night and you find my pictures late at night i don't want you to be able to fall back asleep because i want this to be on your mind at the front of your mind yeah. until the next day and then that's all you think about because if you have something that's on your mind 24 7 you need to act on it good or bad you need to act on it yeah and i i know a lot of people listening today uh, the it's hard developing a medical device and it takes a lot of mental energy and oh, absolutely. you probably, f you feel like you're working nonstop, but that, that work isn't going to do anyone very good if you become unhealthy, unable and unable to, to finish your dream that can benefit someone else. So yes, take care of your health. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right. Well that, that turned from, uh, from device story to motivational story. It did, the end, it did a little bit. Um, maybe a little change in pace there. Uh, yeah. You know, shake things up a little bit. But um, yeah. yeah, I hope uh, people are, you know, motivated to really just to you know, better themselves and then take the motivation that they built up themselves and spread that to everybody else. Mm -hmm. So where can people find you if they're interested in not not only your personal journey through all of this i know you have some channels for that but also the the hearts at large yes uh hearts at large.org uh it's a, an official nonprofit 501c3 organization registered in the state of connecticut and you can find uh more about our mission there you can um, we're still in the process of adding more content to the website uh we're you know we're not very fully staffed at the moment but we are looking to add more stories to uh, the website that cover the the people that have undergone or have been affected by 
an organ or tissue transplant. And right now we're really trying to put some faces to uh, organ donation, uh, some faces and stories. And eventually we'll have a very, very big platform and a very, very big voice to really make organ donation the cool, the next cool thing to do. Mm -hmm. So heartsatlarge.org, that's on Instagram, at heartsatlarge, and on Facebook. You can just search it, Hearts at Large. The red, big red logo will pop up. Click away. Have fun. <laughs> All right. And then what about your personal channels? And if you want to learn more about my story, uh, you can find me on YouTube, AJ Fitness, uh, Instagram and Twitter, Fitness with AJ, and more recently, Snapchat, AJ Fitness. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I just started Snapchat, too. I, I haven't fully adopted it, uh, but I can see the power. I'm of still the kind of platform. adjusted to it, too. But it's, it's yeah, it's a very pro powerful platform and it's very, very new, very intuitive. It's uh, it's very great. It's amazing. Yeah. OK, well, thank you so much for joining us today and giving us this great story to to act on. So Emua, everybody. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so while why you're over there working hard, jump in our Facebook group. It's it's If you just go to facebook.com and you search Inspired by Emua, you'll meet other people also developing medical devices in there that you can talk with and just uh, share share the journey with, share, share those rough waves with. So we publish a new podcast every Tuesday so I'll catch you next Tuesday and then until then Amua. Mahalo for joining us if you're new to riding the waves of medical device product development or if you've been in development for a while already Inspired by Amua is here to surf with you want to be a master of the waves text HANG10 that's all one word H-A-N-G T-E-N to 44222 We'll send you the most common wipeouts companies make in product development so you can avoid them and reach master wave status. Again, that's hang 10 to 44222. We publish a new episode every Tuesday, so catch us at inspiredbyamua.com. Imua, 